Gretzky had the only players to ever score more than 800 goals. He's legendary for the goals, for playing into his 50s, and of course, for the 40 out hat trick, a goal, an assist, and a fight. Hi, thank you for coming back. Today, we're going to be talking about our connection to the disability community. I have um, Asperger's syndrome, a form of high functioning autism. Cliff, do you want to explain your connection? I have autism too, and I was diagnosed when I was three, and and I met Miko through an organization called the Ontario Autism Coalition, which is an advocacy group run by both my parents, Laura Kirby McIntosh, my mom, and my father, Bruce McIntosh, and. Miko, Miko was running this show and he wasn't really having much success so he introduced me and that's how I got on this show. Thank you so much. Um, outside the studio, Cliff also calls um, hockey games as a play-by-play -play analyst. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, outside of the disability channel, I have another job that involves sports broadcasting as I do play-by-play -play commentary for a junior A hockey team called the Toronto Predators as I joined the Predators this past season in 2016-17 in January but before I was working for the Toronto Predators I was working for a team that is now defunct that was known as the Orangeville Ice Crushers I joined the Orangeville Ice Crushers in January of 2016 and I did play-by-play -play for them until they folded in January of this year and because they folded I got set up with the Toronto Predators and I've been there since. Very inspiring. I think that the sports community really needs to embrace me and you because we have autism and we know our sports, we really do. We, we really, we know more than the average person. The, the thing about autism is we're very socially awkward, but then we have these special interests in which we will do just like 18 hours of research a day where we just get the, so much knowledge built up that we actually are just as knowledgeable as guys like Darren Dreger and Darren Detition and um, Ron and Don and like we, I really feel could be the next Ron and Don on Hockey Night in Canada, on Sports Center, on Sportsnet, YouTube, everywhere around the world. People are going to be embracing us. We are going to be a world class thing. This is going to be so exciting. I'm really, really excited about this. Please stay tuned. We're going to go to another commercial break. Hi, thank you for rejoining us. Uh, right now, we're going to talk about the Blue Jays, who just swept the Oakland Athletics in four games, proving that what Gibbon said could actually be true, that the Blue Jays could actually climb out of their slump and be a second-half team like last year and get into the playoffs. That being said, they've now got a series, a weekend series against the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Can they sweep that? Can they... Can they, you know, do another sweep, which would be the fourth season sweep after Oakland, just after the break, right now. And then we swept the Mariners and the Rays before the All-Star break. And how about Justin Smoke? Holy smokes. He has just been absolutely unreal. He's at, what, 28, 29, 30 home runs in the season? No one saw this coming. And I want to go back to earlier in the season when Darwin Barney came out of nowhere 
And for the first 20 to 25 games of the season, regular season, was hitting 400. That is very hard to do in the majors. Cliff, what are your opinions on the Blue Jays right now? Well, it's definitely going to be interesting to watch the Blue Jays during the second half because, as you said, they're looking to make a, another push towards the postseason. And you see, but Darwin Barney, like, I hear he's hitting 400, and it's pretty amazing how he's doing it. And well, it was Justin only for the first 25 kill. games of the regular season, but still, that's hard to do, right? Yeah, it's really hard. And what do you think about Justin Smoke? I mean, like, wow. Yeah, I think Justin Smoke is the new Jose Bautista. And, and he could even be the next version of Edwin or Kendrick Morales, K-Money as they call him. Now, we're going to switch gears a little bit, and we're going to talk Leafs and the free agency and the draft, and then we will um, end the show and we will come back in maybe one or two weeks. We'll figure out the schedule, not sure yet. Now, what did you think of the Leafs signing Patrick Marlowe, future Hall of Famer, who played 19 or 20 seasons with the San Jose Sharks, was their franchise guy, played alongside guys like Brent Byrne, Joe Pavelski, Logan Couture, Joe Thornton. What, what do you think of the Leafs signing him as some veteran presence after Brian Boyle left in the free agency? I mean, he was just a rental. We all knew that. Some of us were hoping he would return, but he didn't. He was just a rental, as I said. What do you think of the Patrick Marlowe signing? Well, when I heard the news, I was shocked. Like, I thought that Marlowe was going to sign another deal with the Sharks, but turns out he left and signed with the Leafs, and I, it's going to be interesting, but also weird to see Marlowe in a Leafs jersey as having been with the Sharks from 1997 up until this year, so it's going to be interesting to watch. And what do you think of Free agents like Shane Doan and Mike Fisher and Jerome McGill and Yalmer Yager still without contracts 28 days in. I mean, these guys are all world-class athletes, all future Hall of Famers for sure. I just, I don't see how they're without contracts. I'll talk to you about one thing. The Penguins are my favorite team. They are back-to-back -back cup champions, 2016-2017. They also went back-to-back -back Stanley Cup Finals, 2008-2009. Lost to the Red Wings in 2008, avenged that loss in 2009. Sid led them to the first Stanley Cup under the Sidney Crosby era with Malkin and a bunch of other talent like Jordan Stahl. Jordan Stahl since left for Carolina. Now, they've lost some huge pieces in the offseason. They lost Flurry, and now Miami is going to be backing up Murray. They lost Benino. They lost Matt Cullen, Trevor Daly. Chris Kunitz was a huge loss. Chris Kunitz was honestly one of my favorite Penguins players of all time. Um, and then the Leafs drafting Timothy Lilligren yeah, at the draft. What do you think of that uh, draft? He's one of the steals of the draft. I'm going to talk about in a couple minutes another steal that another team got in the draft. Well, well, I hear that Timothy Lilligren is a big defenseman, and people have compared him to Eric Carlson. And it's, although he's still a couple years away from playing with the Leafs, I think he could make some presence known with the Marlies. As, you see, Lilia Gren is, I hear he's a really good defenseman, and he could be the next Carson. Well... Another Leafs defenseman that they drafted, second round, I believe 59th overall, Emily Rossinen. He is a big hulk of a guy. 6'7", 255 pounds. He's been compared to Zdeno Chara in his younger days. Could he be that stud defenseman that Toronto's been looking for for so long? I mean, Morgan Riley's a stud in his own. Zaitsev is a stud. Uh, Carrick has definitely been a stud. Jake Gardner at times has been a stud, but at times have been frustrating the hell out of me. I've been yelling at him on the TV. I went to one game this season where the Leafs swept the Boston Bruins for the first time since 1920. My grandfather was born in 1924. That is four years before my grandfather was born that 
the Leafs last swept the Bruins before this current season. Now, another steal of the draft, another guy who's projecting the top three or top five, Kyler Yamamoto went to Edmonton on the 23rd or 22nd pick overall. A small guy, 5'5", five 130 five, pounds, but here's his upside. He would be the first Spokane Washington native to make it to the NHL. His skill, his determination, his courage, his will to win, his will to try and make it in the big leagues, even though people told him he's too small. It's like another Martin San Luis. You're too small, you're never going to make it. This kid is going to make it, and I project this thing, this kid is going to do great things. Kyle Yamamoto, another um, projected third or fifth overall. Uh, Lili Grin, uh, unfortunately, uh, last season, half of the season went down the drain because he got mono, which is a terrible disease. I've had friends who've had it. I know it's not fun. It takes your body's energy right out of you. You just want to sleep the whole time. That being said, the uh, Lili Grin has proven his doubters wrong. And I think another guy that's going to do that is second overall pick to the Philadelphia Flyers, Nolan Patrick. This kid had a sports hernia surgery, and then he had a face infection, but they said he should be good to go for the training camp for Philadelphia Flyers. The only thing is, this kid could do potential great things as a second overall. I don't think he's going to be a bust. I think he's going to prove his doubters wrong. I think he's going to prove many of us wrong, and he's going to do great things. That being said... I really hope he doesn't turn into another guy with great potential who just ends up injured and has to retire early like Joffrey Lupo. I mean, Joffrey Lupo, what a stud for the Leafs, Anaheim, New York Islanders. This kid was projected to go far and then injuries hit him and now he's being forced to retire. The Leafs would just put him with Nathan Horton and Stefan Robidas on the LTIR, giving the Leafs some more cap room to work with. Now, what do you think of... Um, of Emilia Rasanen, we were talking about him yesterday. What do you think? Although I, although I haven't heard of him since, well, although I haven't heard of him before you mentioned him, from what I hear, he could be the next Zdeno Chara, like Emilia Rasanen. I hear he could be compared to Chara, who's a future Hall of Famer, and. Well, it's going to be interesting to see him. He's still a couple seasons away from the Leafs, but here's the thing. Chara has come to the league, done great things, won the Cup in 2011 with a great lineup of Bergeron, Lucic. Um, they had their stud goalies in Tim Thomas and Tuka Rask. Now, that being said, he's going to be turning 40 during this season. I think this is his last season in the NHL. He said he doesn't want to retire, but I don't think the Bruins are going to extend him after next, after this current season. I think what he's going to do is going to go back overseas to Europe, not to the KHL, but to Czechoslovakia and play for the team that he played with when he was 18, 19 years old before he made the Bruins. Um, that being said, we're going to go to another commercial break and we'll be back right after these messages. We've had some fans write in with some questions. The first question is going to go to Cliff. Uh, do you think Matthews will exceed 40 goals that he scored this year? Well, from what I've seen last year from Austin Matthews, I mean, he scored four goals in his NHL debut against Ottawa. And like if he, like if he scores goals more often than he, how he scored goals last year, I think he's definitely going to exceed 40 goals. And do you think that 
the the Leafs can survive without a captain, or do you think they'll name a captain before the season begins, like maybe preseason training camp? Well, I think the Leafs, since they didn't have a captain since a, around 2015, when Phaneuf was their captain, when they traded him, they didn't have a captain. And next year, they didn't name one, and then they made the playoffs. So I think the Leafs definitely need to name a captain, because if, as although it's not likely that they would go far in the playoffs, I think they should still name a captain. Like, although I don't think Matthews is old enough to be captain, I think they should, if they named a captain, I think they should name someone like Jake Gardner or Morgan Riley or maybe James Van Riemsdyk captain. Or Bozak or Marlow as a transitional captain and when his three-year contract's up, then when Matthew's a little bit older, you name him captain. Mm, I think the Marlow thing would be interesting if they named Patrick Marlow captain. I've also heard Morgan Riley's name thrown out there. He's a great uh, leadership, even though he's still so young on the blue line, he's really a stud. And then the last question is, do you think that the Leafs can survive without a captain? No. That was me. That was me. Trade. Trade a forward for a D. Oh, so do I think the Leafs will trade a forward? I don't think they're going to trade a forward. I think they're going to buy out. And a lot of people are going to disagree with me because they say Babcock loves his toys. But Matt Martin, I'm sorry, but you got rid of Polak. Matt Martin needs to go. He's racked up 130 penalty minutes last season. We just need to stay out of the box if we're going to be more successful. We already got Nazem Kadri. I mean, how like how big is it that you know the word is out on his diving? He was able to draw a lot of penalties versus the penalties he took. Now it seems to be going the opposite way because the refs know he's diving to get penalties called against the other team. I honestly, truly think that no. Nah. Uh, they're going to trade Martin for, not trade, they're going to buy him out and then use that money to sign another stud defenseman because, I mean, having Martin Marinson as your number seven, no. I think Marchenko might go down to the Marlies, may get some call-up time, but we need someone to replace for the number four or five, def number five defenseman after Connor Carrick and Jake Gardner, Morgan Riley, and Zaitsev. You just signed that seven-year deal worth $31.5 million. Speaking of some signings, Zach Hyman signs a four-year, $9 million deal with the Leafs, an extension. This is just a bridge contract to see what his potential is going to be four years down the line. Then maybe we'll sign him to a bigger contract. Then another guy we need to re-sign is restricted free agent Connor Brown. What kind of money do you think Connor Brown is going to be looking at? I'm saying in the range of four to five million AAV and average annual value per season. I'm not sure how many seasons he wants, maybe four or five years. What do you think, Cliff? About Brown? And Hyman. Well, I think they need to definitely sign Hyman and Brown. I mean, they, oops. Well, if they want to go a long way, I think Hyman, the way he's been scoring goals, along with Matthews and Nylander, I think they definitely need to sign Hyman and Connor Brown. Well, they re-signed Hyman to four-year, $9 million bridge contract. Now they've got to re-sign Brown. And the thing I like about Hyman, he's the kind of player that Babcock likes. He goes into the corner. He gets into those dirty areas that a lot of players will not go into. I think yeah. that Hyman is going to do great things. And last year, he was on Matthew's line, glued to him for most of the season. I think that... He may be bumped down the line to second or third, maybe even fourth line. I think they're going to put Ben Reams like with Bozak and Marner. That could be a killer line. But maybe you stick to last season's line of Kadri, Komarov, and Ben Reams Dyke. But if you're going to stick to that line, they need to be better in their own end because last year they were shocking. We're going to wrap up the show. Thank you for joining us. And another Leafs side note, Saj Nikov, I don't think will make the Leafs roster this season. I think he goes back down to the minors with Timishov, Trevor Moore, Adam Brooks, a bunch of other talent. And I think Captain and Levo make the opening night roster. Thank you, and we'll talk to you again in the next one to two weeks. Signing out.